I'd like to share with you some common articulation problems on the clarinet and some ways to approach and solve those problems for your young clarinetists. Usually you'll find that they're using too much pressure hitting the reed or it's a very, it's, it's a very um, hard attack on the reed or it's a very dull, imprecise kind of articulation. So either it's that dull, imprecise sound like articulation is caused by a tongue that's touching too far down on the reed and that is being touched too far back on the tongue. So what we're going for with articulation and what, and what you should teach your students about articulation is that you, you, they use just behind the tip of the tongue and that touches just below the tip of the reed. Um, I often tell them to think about using just one little taste bud on their tongue to encourage them to use just a little bit of tongue because the tendency is to really put a lot of tongue on the reed and it's not necessary. In fact, what you ideally, when you're doing a lot of legato articulation is that you basically you maintain the vibration of the reed and if you're hitting the reed with a lot of tongue, that's never going to happen. So I also share with them that the piece of paper with the music, music that they're playing on is probably, you know, that their reed is probably more thin than that and just think about how much pressure it takes if it was blowing in the wind and you wanted to stop your paper from moving, you would just touch it gently, you hit it with your fist. And so many students practically you know, are hitting their reed with a tongue like they were are with a fist, like very hard articulation. Um, and we don't, obviously don't want that kind of sound either. So we're going for a very light articulation just behind the tip of the tongue, just below the tip of the reed. So an exercise that I like to use with my young students is to have them play along open G or C in the left hand, either whichever they prefer, and then see how they can, slowly they can move the tongue to the reed and how lightly they can touch it. And if they do it successfully, it's actually going to make the tip of the tongue tingle or tickle. Because at that point, you're not really stopping the vibration of the reed. Have them try and do, see if they can do it once. They can do it once and have them do it maybe two times. Don't try and go for speed, but try and go for precision and lightness. I also remind them that it's not, articulation is not coming to the reed and hitting the reed. Think of it as bouncing off or coming away. And I use the analogy of a, a paddle ball. The ball really spends most of its time bouncing away from the paddle, and that's what the tongue does. It really bounces off of the reed. So the very first exercise I use with them is to play that open G or that open that, that throat tone C and see if they can move the tongue in very slowly and think about what they're doing. Just lightly touch the reed. And at the same time that they're doing this, remind them that the tongue needs to be, the back of the tongue needs to be high. If they adjust the back of their tongue during articulation, it will cause a lot of problems in the future. So teach that while you're teaching articulation. So use that exercise. very good thing if you hear that because then they're using just a tiny little bit of tongue touching just very lightly on the reed and it's bouncing off. That's the way I start with articulation to teach them just how little, how light of a touch it takes to articulate. They can get that concept and then start to do, so they do one and then maybe they try two and then you can add to three, you can try rhythms like da, 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 or da, 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 da and just increase the number of articulations. But as they're learning this, just make sure they don't try and go too fast from one step to the next. Because you know, ultimately what they're trying to do is articulate really fast. But in order to articulate really fast, you have to have a very light touch. And the tongue needs to stay very close to the reed. And the only way to really learn that is through the process of figuring out how to just touch very lightly. And that has to be done um, at the beginning very slowly. The other thing to keep in mind and that I teach my students and remind them about all the time is that 
only the very tip of the tongue moves. If this, if my hand was my tongue, I would be moving just this little joint at the end of the finger. That's really all that should be moving for articulation. If you notice that when a student is articulating, this part of the throat is moving, that's a bad sign. That means that too much tongue is moving, and I'll show you what that looks like when they're using too much tongue. Because the tongue is moving back and forward and as the tongue moves back and forward it changes the airstream it changes the position of the tongue and all these other things that affect the tone so they really they all go hand in hand but encourage them over and over again that it's just this tiny bit of the tongue that moves and have them think of pulling away or bouncing off the reed and working toward getting the lightest articulation possible if they can do that getting to the point of staccato you know, all, all these con this concept of articulation, the way that you do it, it's really no different when you go to stop staccato or very short staccato. It's just that the tongue just sits on the reed longer. That's all. You keep pushing the air, you keep the tongue in the same place, you don't move any more of the tongue for staccato. You just stop the vibration longer, and you do that. It's like a valve. And when the tongue sits on the reed, there's no sound. When it comes off, you have a sound. So the, less, the more time you spend with the tongue on the reed, the less sound you get. All these concepts work for any type of articulation. <laughs> 